Good morning, I'm Shannon Kelly, and I'm a volunteer with Village Table. My family and I moved to Wellesley in the fall of 2019, and with all of you, we experienced the shutdown of the world in March of 2020. Our family had just started attending Wellesley Village Church, and I wondered how we'd ever find connection on the little boxes in Zoom. Then I noticed a little post in the village e news or the e news from Gary Arthur. I went to Village Table at the start of the pandemic because I was hungry. I was hungry to spend time with my daughter, who at the time was really enthusiastic about cooking and baking. I was thirsty for connection in my new community, and I was eager to try something new in a time where everything felt stopped. I wanted to help sustain my new community, but I especially wanted to show up for something. Not occasionally attend, sometimes volunteer, but really show up. So a couple stories. I thought that new community would be members of our church, so great. I'd have my new community, and it'd be right here within these walls. And of course, many are. But thanks to Gary, Village Table was discovered by our whole community. When you go to the table in Fellowship Hall after the service, or if you decide to spontaneously help us with packaging today, you'll meet some of them. They're here this morning at our church not because they belong here, but because of their passion for feeding people and their belonging at Village Table. My family and I also attended the feeding frenzy here at church last year, and I was overwhelmed by our church's enthusiastic and heartwarming response to that event. I didn't know what to expect, and I arrived, and it was hairnets and gloves and activity and fun, and we really showed up for that. So it's clear we like to get our hands dirty, or I guess clean, in gloves, work in teams, we like to feed people. And I challenge you that Village Table goes one step farther. I think you should give it a try. The mission that Gary presented was an exciting menu. We'd make food for those who didn't have it. We'd give with dignity. And we'd present food, as Martha mentioned, that was healthy and attractive. In November of 2020, Gary took meals out to the Methadone Mile. I'll just pause briefly to describe the meal for those of you who weren't in the kitchen that day. Roasted turkey breast, roasted potatoes, of course, with little parsley sprinkled on it. Carrots, Brussels sprouts, green bean casserole, gravy. I mean, it was over the top. Packaged in the little containers with all the separate sections. It was bright, it was colorful. While Gary was out there on the streets with the people, an older woman stopped him. She said that the last group that came out gave them plain white rice. And she was grateful for the wholesome meal in front of her. She ate that meal sitting on a curb outside on the streets. And she was grateful. I had my own experience like this about three weeks ago. We have a new partner um, organization, Chaplains on the Way, in Waltham. I met their director, Jill, when I was at the Alternative Christmas Fair. She had the table next to Jane and I. And I promised her that the first 30 meals I could pull off making above what we'd promised to other organizations would go to them. I delivered baked chicken parmesan, farfalle pasta, and green beans. And Jill had mentioned at the morning meeting that she has with the homeless individuals in Waltham that show up every morning during the winter for breakfast that I was coming. She gave them a little preview of what I was bringing. As I unloaded the 30 meals in the kitchen, a woman came up to me and introduced herself. Her name was Margo. 
and she told me how much it meant to her to have a hot meal, that it was rare. She said that she'd been in a really bad mood that morning when she got to the program, and Jill was standing kind of behind me and started laughing and heartily agreed with that. Margot looked at me and said that knowing that I cared enough to come there that day with the meals had completely changed her day. Then she asked me to do something for her. She asked me to thank all of the people that had worked with me to help make the meals. This is what we're doing at Village Table. This is our impact. At Village Table, there's also sides. See what I'm doing here? Of learning. We have food safety training through Serve Safe. We learn how to navigate a professional kitchen with big pots, big trays, big knives, and we learn cooking efficiencies. And thank goodness, at Village Table, we also have dessert. The friendships created in the kitchen are some of the greatest gifts. These folks show up over and over and over again. They make mistakes, and they laugh a lot. Personally, some of these friends have held me up in other areas of my life in ways that I'll always be grateful for. Some have been rocks of support to me as I worked on the Village Table relaunch, and I wouldn't have met any of them without Village Table. You know a place is special when you leave full, but already planning the next time you'll go back. You think about what you'll order the next time, who you might invite to go with you. The work I did that Gary showed me how to do also taught me how important it is to do two things. This is the punchline. Focus on what someone in need needs, not on what is convenient or easy to give. I'm gonna say that again because it's really important. Focus on what someone in need needs, not what is convenient or easy to give. And secondly, show up when it's easy and when it isn't. These are the lessons that went far beyond Village Table and have made me a better person, mother, friend, and wife. This is why I chose to take up the leadership reins of Village Table, and I'm passionate about building it into a self-sustaining organization. With your gifts of time, money, and prayer, Village Table can continue to nourish us all. In asking you to support Village Table, I think it's important to share a little bit of what I think it could become. We saw Gary expand Village Table to Temple Beth Halloween. TBE Table is thriving. Clearly, this is something that, we can, that can be done if a house of worship is inspired to do so. I've also learned in the past few months that it's possible to create recipes and procedures that can be executed by non-chefs like myself. I watched as Jane perfected her massive volume pasta cooking procedures. She documented them, and now it's like clockwork. We're gonna develop expertise, and thus we can enable many to lead. With more leaders, we could expand our sessions and create more meals. We could go from 250 to 500 or more to provide meals to more individuals in need. There's so much need. Mass Bay, community bridges, and even an organization near Charles Street called Project Right that would love to share our food. And I have a little secret. We have volunteers. We have a lot of volunteers <laughs> who try to sign up and the shifts are full. So in time, we could grow if we have the passion for it and the finances. I'm excited to think of how many people we could feed with dignity and care. So please take a moment to come to our volunteer, to visit our volunteers at our table in Fellowship Hall after the service. 
to ask more about what we do and how you might be involved. We have a wide variety of roles in and out of the kitchen. And if you're moved to respond to our greatest need, that of financial support, we're grateful. And we'll continue to work to meet the needs of those who are facing food insecurity. Thank you for listening.